before you buy any laws what you want to do is you want to check out the rating of your rod to find out how heavy a laws you can purchase that your rod will be able to handle and cast so if you look at the numbers on the rod the one where it's got the G on tells you how many grams your rod can cast so on this occasion this rod here HOI Nebula rod will cast anything between 7 grams to 35 grams as a top end obviously you can cast slightly more than that but then again that's up to you but if you work between the rated uh, grams of the rod you cannot go wrong right so now we know the rating of our rod what we can do is we can start looking at different lures uh, that we could use so let's have a look in the box then and see what kind of lures I've got in my box and what different sort of scenarios I use them for so we're going to start off with top water lures so from here to here is top water lures so let's have a look see what we've got Got Pachenko 100 and 500G. This colour is pretty much the colour that everyone raves about. It's like a bluey purple with a goldy top. Um, again, probably, if you speak to bass anglers, probably they will have one of these lures in their box. It's pretty much, I, I would say it's pretty much the go-to bass lure for bass anglers. Predominantly using top waters, you want to use them when it's flat calm. Um, fishing to make a disturbance it's got a rattle in it and most of them have rattles in um, and what you do is you cast the lure out like I've said in previous videos cast the lure out it's just on the top of the water and then you basically reel in the slack line and then twitch the rod so you twitch it and as you twitch it it will dart across the surface of the water making that nice little rattle to hopefully entice a fish these laws are pretty much uh, coming to their own if you're fishing over snaggier areas um, where there's a lot of rocks underneath you uh, or a lot of weed and you know, things that could potentially snag you up to lose the lure. So I use top water laws uh, predominantly when I'm fishing around uh, like snaggy marks or if I'm fishing a clean sandy beach where the water is flat calm. So yeah, so I've got two Pachenko uh, 500, 500G color in size 100s. Um, I just like having two if I lose one and it's catching on the day um, you know it's, it's best to have two in my opinion again um, Pachenko 100 in a white color um, usually white colors are more favored during the during the night or white and black favored during the night compared to a more natural like, looking colour during the day is usually what what people say we'll, we'll go on to colours in, 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 in a minute we'll just have a look at the different kinds of lures so here a slightly cheaper version of a top water lure actually a glide I've got one in that size there and another one in a smaller size here smaller sizings usually work better towards the beginning of the season um, when the when the fish or the, when the bass are chasing smaller prey fish such as sprats and things like that and then obviously as the season progresses you increase the size of the lure to, to match what type of fish the uh, the bass are chasing this one here again axia uh, vulture i believe it is got like a little vein on the bottom there again it's a top water lure just a different shape different profile and that is pretty much all of my top water lures and when I use them. So top water laws, just a quick goat, just a quick recap. Top water laws, when I use them over snaggier um, ground where you are fishing across the top of boulders and things like that, um, cast them out, they sit on the top of the water and then when you reel in the line, jerk the rod tip left to right, or if you're standing there, just jerk it to the left and it will dart across the top of the water. Right, and moving on to shallow diving laws. Now this one here is probably the most popular shallow diving lure that you can get. Which is here, probably the most popular bass anglers, is the Komomo 2. Komomo 2. Again, like the top water lure, it's got a rattle in it. But this is slightly different as to when you cast out, it sits on the top of the water. And then when you start reeling in, it will dive uh, to maybe you know a shallow distance under the top of the water and then it will work under the top of the water 
when you reel it in they flutter left to right like so and you can tell it's a shallow diver if you look on the front of the lure it will have a vein like that sometimes they're molded into the lures sometimes they're a plastic vein that's how you tell so i've got the kimono 2 in this color here it's a shiny flashing plate color i've also got one here that is pretty holographic it's pretty battered up that one again there and the other shallow diving lure I carry with me, just to say a little bit different, is this one here, Abu Garcia Tormenta. This one is the size 110. Um, and I just like this lure because it has the joint on the back. And when you reel this thing in, it, it, casts, like, it casts like a wet shoe. But when you reel it in, you've got that nice action on the back of there as well. Other notable mentions for shallow diving lures are the Rapala J13s. Oh, I really like them as well. So when do I use shallow diving lures? I won't use them around the more rockier marks just due to the fact that when they dive down they potentially you know, could get snagged. Um, I'll use them on cleaner um, like pebble beaches uh, and things like that. That's just my personal preference. Um, where I know the water is a little bit, deep, little bit more deeper and they're less likely to get snagged and I'm less likely to, use, to lose them. It's the last thing you want to be doing is losing lures. So yeah, pretty much on the, on the cleaner beaches where I use them uh, and on the more deeper watermarks. All right, so moving on to soft plastics. This one here, the Pirate Lures Teaser. I think it's a size 12. This lure is literally my go-to soft plastic lure. I absolutely love these lures, uh, as you might have seen in previous videos. Um, I've caught some nice bass uh, using these lures here. So yeah, these are my go-to lures. I rig all my soft plastics pretty much weedless. Uh, and the reason I do that is because where we're fishing over Eastbourne, um, I like using these in the more rockier marks uh, where I can drop them right down underneath the rocks and then I can just work them through the rocks like so. Um, got a paddle on the back, so when you reel it in, the paddle will thump left to right like so. Um, weedless hooks there um, on the smaller size 12 pirate lures i think these ones are free o's uh, these hooks i've sourced from sea booms and like i said i like to fish them with a weighted section there just because you can you can cast them much further uh, and cover more area with them so this one is in a lemony sort of back color um, i've got them in all different colors um, so you got like a candy color there and then a pink color there. There's loads and loads of different colors. Have a look at Drake House Laws um, or search for Pirate Laws on the internet. You will find them on there. Again, absolutely fantastic, awesome laws. Colors wise, as we were speaking about colors before, um, you'd usually tend to go for the more natural colors uh, fishing when the water is clear. So obviously the clear colors and maybe the white colors. Um, and then the brighter colours will be for when the water is dark or cloudy, which is there. Again from Pirate Laws, here is the Pirate Laws Rasa. This one is actually um, rigged uh, weightless. So when you cast that in, it will just literally sit in the top of the water column. And it won't really, I mean it will sink, but it won't sink as far. I've rigged this one upside down just because I want to have a look, just to see if it makes any kind of difference really. But yeah, Pirate Laws Rasa there and there. Like so this one here is, I've actually added a split shot onto the hook. So I mean, if you don't have any weighted hooks, you can squish a split shot onto the hook um, just to make it have a little bit more sink rate there. These, um, these laws are a smaller profile to the bigger Pirate Laws, which are there, just so you can see the difference. Again, much thinner uh, and slightly shorter. I've been trying these out uh, towards the beginning of the of the bass season, uh, when you know the bass are chasing smaller bait fish and things like that. So the other two soft plastics I'm carrying this year are these ones. I believe these are X Slayer um, lures, Mega Bass X Slayer X Slayer. Uh, uh, I think these are Mega Bass X Slayer Slayer lures. Again, this one is rigged with no weight on it. It's got a rattle in the back, and it's just a different. It's a different shape, so I'm going to just try them. Really nice wiggle action on the back there. So yeah, we'll try them and see how we get on with them this year. 
and then the last soft plastic I'm carrying or the last two soft plastics I'm carrying are from Rooney's um, fishing supplies a really small paddle tail there a reed on a cheb which is there so a cheb's like a ball weight and it just allows more free movement on the on the back of the lure which is there so yeah just a different way of rigging there and then the last paddle tail I'm using or the last soft plastic I'm using should I say are these ones here which are like a it's like a little worm to be fair yeah so again from Rooney's Fishing Supplies check them out on Facebook and on the internet you'll be able to find them on there they do some really good stuff so again then soft plastics you can pretty much use them any way you want on the rough stuff and on the clean sandy beaches so yeah that's pretty much soft plastics in a nutshell other things I use are things like this so this is a Savage Gear pencil again two different colours there one more natural colour and one a bit more shinier I'd use these in pretty much more windier conditions when the sea is a little bit more rougher um, it just helps you cut through the wind uh, just with the shape of the law um, I'm still experimenting with these so I can't give an in-depth analysis as to when they're good or when they're not good but yeah uh, would I fish them in the rougher stuff? potentially not I would use them on clean sandier beaches um, I fit all my uh, metals and uh, pencils with the single hooks here these ones are from Coxon Rule right so moving on to metal lures these ones are Savage Gear Seekers very popular metal lure uh, this one's a surf seeker so it's rated to 35 grams remember what I was saying about the rating on the rod uh, just check what the what the lure weight is so that one's pretty much at the top of the rating of our lure of our lure rod uh, and then this one here I believe it's like 18 or 19 grams so it's slightly smaller use these pretty much uh, on clean sandy beaches I wouldn't use them again in the uh, in the rough stuff or in the uh, heavier snagged areas I'd leave that for the top water lures which sit on the top uh, away from the snags and the uh, weedless soft plastics but yeah use them on clean sandy beaches um, you can cast these for absolute miles they're absolutely awesome lures and the last type of lure I got with me is the TC's lures by Mark Cowling um, I'll just throw that one in the bag for this year uh, again rigged one single hook on the back there um, I'm just going to try this out uh, I don't really know much about this lure to be fair um, I'll probably use it in more windier conditions uh, just due to the shape of the profile uh, this thing absolutely casts like a missile so you can cover quite a lot of area with this lure after a session using your lures don't forget to run them under cold water um, and what I usually do is I usually hang them like that in my shed uh, just to drip dry off before putting them back into my tackle box saves you from uh, saves the hooks from rusting up right guys so that is pretty much my lure selections um, what I use them for in a nutshell I hope you've enjoyed the video please don't be um, you know discouraged by the different lures in the box uh, obviously my lure collection uh, has stemmed from collecting over um, a couple of years so I mean obviously if, you, if you're new to lure fishing and you're just looking to get out these are the top three lures that I use all the time that I recommend you get in so this one here the Pachenko 100 um, around about £30 pound, uh, each uh, again if you don't want to spend that sort of money and you want to go slightly cheaper actually do um, a Climax lure which is around about £10 pounds. and also Savage Gear do uh, a Panic Prey I think it's called which is pretty much the same kind of profile and the same kind of shape as this lure um, if you can I definitely recommend you get a selection of Pirate Lures teasers uh, they're just absolutely fantastic lures and I've caught some nice fish on them so yeah definitely do recommend them and then lastly I recommend you get a metal uh, Savage Gear Seeker which is there um, or you can get a Dexter Wedge which is an absolutely fantastic lure I haven't got with me today um, again it's a really really good lure so yeah three lures that I would highly recommend you purchasing would be a top water lure a soft plastic lure and a metal lure just to get you started in the world of lure fishing so thanks very much for watching guys if you haven't subscribed yet please do consider it uh, and i'll hopefully see you on the next video